course, the Bruins took over that hockey game, played very well. This crowd has been chanting, let's go Islanders, for about the last five minutes, and here they go. So this game is underway, and the Islanders going to the attack, in on the boards, it goes, the Bruins clearing it to the line. Now down on the right wing at number 11 is Casper, coming up on the other side is Brad Pack. Kruzaniski gets it, shoot, and save by Smith, outstanding save by Smith on Kruzaniski. What a marvelous scoring chance for the Boston Bruins in the first 30 seconds of play. Casper played it very well. Brad Park was rushing up the ice, but he was covered by the time they got inside the zone, so he dropped it back to the trailer, Kruzaniski. He really drilled it, Danny, right at Billy Smith. Smith didn't necessarily have to make that much of a move to block that point-blank shot from Big Mike Kruzaniski. Oh, what a chance. And the face-off to the left of Smith. Saturday night is the liveliest night of the year on Long Island when there's a hockey playoff game. Here's Gordon, go, bring it up, go! Very effectively, 
by Dupont, who did a tremendous job, and that's the part of the Boston on Thursday night. And the Bruins right in front of the middle of There's the shot, and it was blocked by Pasha. The Bruins have had some great chances, Dick. Three sensational saves by Smith early in the hockey game. Now it's Burke ahead on the right side to Peterson, back to Burke, in over the line, and it's called on the offside. Billy Smith has been the big story, along with the goal scored by Butch Goring, as Danny mentioned. Boy, the Bruins have had their chances. Rick Middleton, the big sniper for Boston in the season, had a chance right there. Smith with the save. Persaud takes away the rebound. Bruins doing a good job, forcing the Islanders off the puck in the zone. They need a goal. If they can make that pressure pay off, it will make a big difference. Danny Potvin. The Islanders captain on the bench. And as a high school athlete, he was a tremendous halfback in football. And in Toronto, Middleton didn't play any football. But what a hockey player. So on the left side, Melnick. Over to O'Connell. One to nothing. The Islanders in front here in the first period. And O'Connell digs diligently up on the wing. Clearing it in. Now you have that big guy, 25, Krusalisky, moving in. O'Connell keeps it. Into Ireland territory. Moro back in action after missing that game in Boston on Thursday. And they did miss him. Here's Nystrom in on the right side. Trying to shake off Melling. It's centered in front. Krusalisky laying it up on the left side. Not back in there by Moro. Now Melling lays the body off to Tonelli. Nystrom going in. Here's going to Tonelli behind the net. Tonelli starts to lead from the net. The Bruins are going to pick it up and start out. That was rather authoritative pressure by that line for the Islanders of Gorey, Tonelli, and Nystrom. They're back. They shoot it in. And it's Belnick back there. In Boston territory, up on the right side. Bruce Crowder, a spectacular game on Thursday. He weaves into the corner. Crowder getting set. He centers it. Burke tried to go in in full flight. He lost it. Burke has it again. Here's Burke, clearing it into the corner. McTavish trying to get it back to the line. The Islanders clear it down the ice. This could be icing. Striding back is Burke. The Islanders lead 1-0 from the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island. This is Stanley Cup 83 on CBC. The scoring play, Butch Goring, is fourth of the playoffs. Bob Bourne on the assist at 33 seconds here in what has been a very noisy first period at the Nassau Coliseum. Number 18 is Keith Crowder. He is on with McNabb and McTavish, and that probably was the outstanding line on the ice. Thursday, there's a shot by Potvin. He gets the rebound, Potvin. Clearing it into the corner, Wayne Sutter's pass goes all the way to the blue line, a pass to Crowder. Coming in with McTavish, McNabb is getting in front, there's a shot by McTavish, and that line is at it again. Now the Islanders striding out over the line. Lane going to the far side, rolled it gently ahead into the corner, Clark takes over. Passes it back to center if you near the fifth minute mark into the opening period, one to nothing. For the Islanders on a spectacular goal by number 91, Corey. Now there's a long shot nowhere near the net off the stick of Brent Sutter. Park giving it to Middleton. And now Park got it back. He gets that excellent pass away. He's one of the better passers in all of hockey. Number 22. That is Brad Park. He has what the players like to receive, the feathery type of pass that they can handle easily. Now Dufour going to the line. Look it up. Here's Trottier shooting it into the right side. A shot by Bossy. And that went off the stick of Hillier. Good move there by Middleton. Middleton going in. I'll take it right above the shot. It's Peterson and the Bruins have had at least four Warriors scoring opportunities. Tonight's Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from Long Island, New York. The game played here last Tuesday night saw the Islanders win 8-3, but people who are at the game said Boston could have had a 3-0 first period lead easy, except for the work of Billy Smith. Here we see it tonight again. That save off Barry Peterson. Now there is Bourne 
for the Islanders for checking. Look at that. Fourth, number seven was in there for checking. And Luzak is playing down. And Dick, you know, right here, it might be well to take this one moment to express happy birthday wishes. I know from as many, many thousands of fans, particularly from the world of hockey, to Mr. Frank J. Suckey, who on Tuesday next will be 19 years of age. 90 years young, I think is what we should say. And you're right, Danny, fans from coast to coast would join you in those wishes for sure. I would think his association with hockey goes back 75 years because I think I recall his having said one time that he was the manager of a hockey team when he was 14 or 15 years of age. And what a glorious contribution he has made to the game of hockey throughout this entire country in the 75 or so years that he has been associated with the game. Mr. Selke, happy as returns come Tuesday, 90 years. Luzak clearing it in there. Now, there's the broom player from behind the bench trying to get it out in front. And you notice out there, number seven, Bork is up front. Luzak and Parker on defense. Now Bork falls back. There's the long shot. Stopped at the line. One to nothing for the Islanders. Hillier racing up with Bork. Bork takes a look. Over on the other side, who's like the big guy trying to roll through there, and the Islanders breaking it up. And he also has four defensemen on the ice right now. Two are playing his wing and two on the defense. Well, I would think that somebody put in a call to punch him like this afternoon because I remember about 10 years ago in Montreal, he started the game with five defensemen. This is Hockey Night in Canada from the Nassau Coliseum. Face-off is in the center ice area from the Boston line. O'Connell cleared it and Pedley coming up for Krushelisky. I think it will be for upending Nystrom. Nystrom is coming in on the right wing with the shot. And a great glove grab by Peter Smith has scampered to the Islanders bench on the far side, but near the New York blue line this time. Boston penalty number 25, Mike Krushelisky, two minutes tripping. Time of the penalty, 7.14. 7.14, the time of the tripping penalty call at Krusilinski. Talking with several of the Boston players this morning at the workout here at the Coliseum, they were talking, Danny, a lot about the Islanders' power play. It was the one thing that they said, we've got to contain the power play. They referred back in particular to the game play here a week ago tonight when the Islanders scored three times on the power play. We'll see what happens. This is New York's first chance. Jerry Cheever up on the bench. He was just involved in a rather animated discussion with referee Andy Van Helleman about his line changing. Casper is up front. We'll pick up the alignment for the Brooms as they get set to defend here. The Islanders, of course, Potman is on the point along with Pearson. Trotsky behind the net. Bossy is in front. On the boards, over on this side, it hit Bossy, and the Bruins shooting it down the ice. The other man on the power play for the Islanders, number 28, Keller. Middleton up front with Pete Peterson, Park on defense with O'Connell. And the Islanders on the power play, it's off the boards. It came at a peculiar angle. It had Peters going one way and the puck the other, but luckily, Keller was being checked by O'Connell. Back into the center ice area. Hairsong shooting it in. Peters takes over. He lost the back. It is Bossy, and I would think Peters would have to take some of the blame for that goal. He was caught out of position. Mike Bossy's tough enough when there's a goalie in the net. When it's open, no contest. The power play goal. This is what the Bruins were afraid of. There's Peters losing the puck to Trotje. He tried to one-hand it along on the boards, and you see he kind of stumbles up against the base of the net, and he is in no position to come back and try to make the save. So Mike Bossy scores his 12th playoff goal on the power play. It's 2-0 New York. And Peters will rule the day the shot clock started to roll behind the net. Because everybody's been doing it since. And although his
his intention was good, his judgment was not very good there. Goal at 8.09. So we'll recap that scoring play for you. Two to nothing for the Islanders. McNabb coming in with a drifting high rising shot. In on the boards they go. Keith Crowder trying to get it. Mazad for checking also. McTavish is the other forward. Here come the Islanders. It's Bourne on the left side. Over the line. It's cleared along the boards. Bourne again. Playing it off. Brent Sutter. It's picked up this time by Dwayne Sutter. He's knocked in on the boards by Kluzak. And Bourne has it. Twisting and turning. Gets it up on the line. Keith Crowder fanned the first time, and then it was a giveaway, actually. Back goes to Bourne at the line to Janssen. The Islanders failed to negotiate that pass successfully, and it's Bourne. With 10 minutes and 52 seconds left in this, the opening period, the Islanders in front, two to nothing. Now Brent Sutter, twisting and turning himself. Gets it on the left side, Canelli. Couldn't get anywhere. Crucial Niski is on the ice along with Gillis and Bruce Potter. Bruce Potter stopping puck fan. Will they get a whistle? No, they don't. Pressure here by the Bruins. Gorey clearing it. It's off the line. Nystrom coming out. He was upended. And the Islanders supporters thought there should have been a second consecutive penalty there to Boston, but the Bruins with the play carrying on in they go. Bruce into the corner area. Nystrom. Takes a look, dashing down on the left side. Tonelli, get over the line. Tonelli moves in there against O'Connell. Into the boards. Tonelli was buffing. Here's Nystrom. He lost it. And it's Crowder. That is Bruce Crowder flicking the long, long shot. Morrow takes over. Less than 10 minutes to go in the opening period. Boston breaking up the Islanders. Now Tonelli coming down. Tonelli coming in. And he fired it wide. Tonelli made an excellent move against Park on the left side. Now Park has it for Boston. Middleton clearing it to Burke, one of the best rushing defensemen in all of hockey. Burke is in there. They shot the rebound. And let's see, they score! Middleton on the rebound. Burke taking the shot. A very important goal. Makes it to 2-1 to hockey game. Rick Middleton's 10th goal of the playoffs. But Raymond Bork did all the work on the rush. And what a move he makes on Morrow as he makes the deke on Morrow and lets the shot go as he steps by him. Smith can't control the rebound. Nobody's there to clear it. And Middleton cutting in from the right side. Backhands it off the post oh, into the net. 2-1. Islanders number 16, Rick Middleton. The assistant number 7, Ray Bork. Attackers for Boston Albert. Sharp angle shot by Peterson. And let's see, will the whistle go now? Yes, it will go with 838 remaining. The Islanders are being penalized. And with the score, the New York Islanders 2, the Boston Bruins 1. This is Stanley Cup 83. Brian Trotte in the box, tripping the call at 11.22, and while the delay was on in the penalty, Danny, what a chance for Rick Middleton to tie the hockey game. Oh. The Bruins have had outstanding scoring opportunities. They trail two to one. And that indomitable spirit which characterized and stood the Bruins in good stead all year is rising and surging here again. They got behind two to nothing. They cut it at two one. Now they have an opportunity to tie the game. They have the odd man advantage on the power play. It's McNabb leading a four-man attack in over the line. He leads O'Connell in there, in front of the net is Keith Crowder, back and goes to Park. Park gets it back, Park fakes the shot, here's McNabb cutting it, right in front of O'Connell, a shot, rebound, that was another big chance. Now a hard pass is deflected, good pressure here by the Boston Bruins, hot fan, falls on the puck. However, there's no whistle, it's loose and the Bruins keep it in. McCavish giving it to O'Connell. 
Back into Keith Brother. A high pass behind the net. Let's see if they get a whistle here. Yes, they do a good power play, didn't they? Two last two scoring plays. We haven't had a chance to recap. Bossy on the power play from Trache and Persson at 809 with Crucial Niski in the box. And then Middleton from Bork and Brad Park at 1042. It's a two-to-one hockey game. Danny, you can't fault the way the Boston Bruins have played this game so far. They made a couple of miscues. Goring got away, although he made a fine play. And then the miscue by Peters on the Bossy goal. Billy Smith has had to be outstanding. Boston has had about a half dozen excellent scoring chances. Indeed, they have looked very impressive on the attack. And of course, it's obvious that they had a refreshing resurgence of spirit as a result of that victory before their home crowd. Now here's Burke going in with a shot. Dunked over the top of the net. And can he whistle that puck? Number seven is centered in front. Picked up and born. Here's it down the ice. But in the first minute and 25 seconds of the power play, the Bruins have been pressed now. They're coming back again into the center ice area, getting over the line. Back it goes to a final way to front to Middleton. It's blocked by Janssen and the Islanders all along. Carroll. Carroll killing off valuable seconds, playing it back to Janssen. Ward picks it up at center. He has excellent speed. Here's Ward going in over the line. Ward is coming, trying to get in front. And he jammed it wide. What spectacular maneuver ability by Ward. But it was, was it offside? Yeah, it was offside, but you could not hear the whistle. We couldn't. Bob Ward couldn't. But linesman Wayne Bonney had called the play offside at the Boston line. As Danny mentioned, the first minute and 25 seconds of the power play, the Bruins had total control inside the New York blue line zone. Three seconds left now in the penalty to Brian Trutje. Well, this has been a rather interesting day for Canadian athletes. We have a lot of two-legged ones out here on the ice tonight, along with Americans and Swedish players. And a four-legged Canadian, Sonny's Halo, won the Kentucky Derby today. The first Canadian bred horse to win that race at the mighty Northern Dancer in 1964. I don't know if Sonny's Halo can get the American version of this game in uh, the stalls down in uh, Louisville, but in any event, we congratulate well, we the Kentucky say, Derby winner from Canada. Well, we'll say hello to Sonny. Pete Peters had an excellent game the other night in Boston. A bit of a shaky start here. Now he's had to contend with some bouncing pucks too. Dick, you mentioned with three seconds left in the penalty. Then I saw the referee go over. They've changed the ah, clock. So. Six seconds now. And there's the perspiring Trottier in the penalty box. 6.44 the time remaining in the period. The Islanders leading the Bruins 2-1. to one. Now... The penalty has expired. Boston coming in. Casper is chasing it against Janssen. Casper is a very determined digger. Very, very rugged. He's 5'8", 159, but a lot of dynamite there. Hockey Night in Canada will continue in just a moment. They line up for the face-off to the left of Smith. The Islanders have shown tremendous potency in their play. Here at the Coliseum, the last five playoff games they have won and they've outscored the opposition 31 to 9. Right now in this game, very, very important. It is 2 to 1 for the Islanders and they raced into the center ice area in all of the line. Callan trying to get it back across the A and it ricocheted into Peters. That brings the face off in Boston territory. There is Ken Morrow had the knee injury which kept him out of the lineup a game in Boston two nights ago. Uh, there you see the medical version of the treatment that he underwent, and he is back. He skated this morning. They still weren't sure. Young Boudelier worked, uh, actually skated in the pregame warm-up, but Morrow said he was okay, so he is in uniform. Just to recap the series and the scores, three games played in Boston. The Islanders won the opener of the series 5-2. The Bruins won the other two games played on their home ice 4-1 and 5-1. In games three and four here at the Nassau Coliseum, Al Arbor's Islanders winners by scores of 7-3 and 8-3. Now it is back to the line. Lane clearing it in. Melnick taking over. Out to Dufour on the left side. Lined up for a body check. Delivered by Lane. Pass intercepted. The Bruins coming in. McTavish has spun around. Melnick by Potvin. In there for checking McTavish, along with
Josh Crowder. Back into the center ice area. Islanders having all kinds of difficulty getting an offense organized. Now, a penalty coming up. Or are we going to have a couple, maybe? Uh, Gillies was involved with crucial Niski. Clark Gillies playing the left side with the Sutters here. Bourne has just killed the penalty. So there's a high-sticking call. Gillies goes to the box. I don't know about the Boston player. And there is Clark Gillies, not too happy. Now here it is uh, along the boards. Gillies with the left forearm against Krujel Niski. And there was Gillies hammering Krujel Niski. Live from the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island. The Stanley Cup playoffs. Clark Gillies, the only penalty of that exchange. So the Boston Bruins, Danny, with another power play try. And if they execute as well as they did when they had the advantage the last time, conceivably they'll tie up this game. But right now it's intercepted by Goring, recovered by O'Connell to Peterson. Up on the far wing, that pass too far ahead for Krusilinski. The Islanders fail to clear it out. Peterson gives it to Burke, shot, and it's blocked. Here's O'Connell over to Burke, Burke winds up, ricochet off the skate of Potvin, and it went wide. Middleton laying it into the corner. Boston throws the puck around very well. Now it's Peterson again, and it's knocked off his stick by Pearsall. They had Kruzelinski parked in front of Smith, Potvin kept carrying him out of the way. So now we have a minute and six seconds remaining. Peterson in over the line, takes a look. Passes it into the corner, bumping Pearson and Kruzelinski. And here's the break for Billy Carroll. Billy Carroll is coming down. Going for the on goal. Shoots, and a spectacular save again. We see in this hockey game, this time by Peters, but with not too much experience in scoring goals, perhaps he didn't play it as well as he should have. He played in 71 games this season, principally as a penalty killer. Billy Carroll scored once in regular season play. He has one playoff goal. The puck ricocheted off a Boston player, so that wiped off many offside. Carroll was in all alone. Pete Peters held his ground in the goal crease and made a very large save for the Boston Bruins. 51 seconds left in the Gillies penalty. And Carroll coming that close to a shorthanded goal for New York. Face off to the right of Peters. Two to one. The Islanders leading the Bruins. We have Park and Bork on for Boston. McNabb, Keith Crowder, and McTavish. Gory up front. Johnson and Morrow on defense. And Billy Carroll... The other penalty killer along with Goring up front. So we're going to have two personalities that have been faced off against each other. So far in this game, who's been there but Tammy Shank Carroll. Ford, right in front of the net, gives it to Park. Park has to go back. Ford checking there by Goring. Now a pass into the center ice area. Here is Goring cutting in on the left side with Carroll. Goring working in backhand shot. And it was blocked by the veteran Park. Here come the Bruins. Ward over the line. Going in with Keith Potter. And the Islanders knocking it back to center. 18 seconds left in the penalty to Clark Gillies. Two to one, the Islanders leading. Now here's Ward. Ward getting set. He flipped it in front. McTavish. McTavish takes a look. Here's Clark with it. Will he pass it over? Yes, he gives it to Bork. Back into McNabb. Right in front. The time he scores! Beautiful passing. Tic-tac-toe play. And McTavish ties it. Bork is the key. He's the quarterback on the power play in a situation like that. And McTavish, who scored his second playoff goal the other night in Boston, gets number three right here. But Danny, you're right. It was the puck controlled by the Bruins. They hadn't done very much in the power play. Up to this point, the Islanders had killed it very well. It had scoring chances. But right there, from the slot, as he's being checked by Janssen, who had been hammering McTavish just a few seconds before that, trying to clear him out from the slot area. McTavish hangs tough and scores the tie goal. Well, the Bruins were down 2 nothing, and now it's 2-2. The assist to number 8, Peter McNabb, and number 7, Ray Moore. 
Time of the goal, 16-34. And Dick, as this game progresses, you know you look back, and that save on Carroll will loom very, very large, I'm sure. So it is a tie hockey game, and Casper flipping it in there. It's Lane behind the net. He took his eye off the puck. He missed it. Now it's along the boards to Tonelli. The Bruins have looked very impressive in this first period. I would think they've had the better scoring opportunities by far. Oh, very much so. Billy Smith. Now Casper over to Nystrom. There's the shot. Locked. Knocked down. Gloved in behind the net by number 11, Mary. There's number 11 for the Bruins. Casper handing it off. Big Kuzak gaining confidence with every passing game. Took a shot, didn't have much on that. Now Nystrom bumps his man along the boards. That was Bruce Potter. Moving in, the Boston team staying on top of the Islanders. Shot back in by Clark Smith. Comes out to do some clearing on the left side to Tonelli. He was forced to get rid of it. Score tied at 2. At 2.22, the time left in the period. Is the first period. The victory here tonight will send the Islanders against the Edmonton Oilers. A loss here. A seventh game in Boston on Tuesday night. And the Islanders know how difficult it would be to win a seventh game in Boston. Now Boston coming back in on that right side. Here's Dufour. He's been a checker most of the series. He's on the offense right here, and he made a good move to get around the net. It's clear down the ice. Peters is going to cover up. This Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from Long Island, New York. So there you see the score in the first period, 2-2. Two -two. Minute and 42 seconds remaining. That face-off area to the right of Peters. And O'Connell is going to lug it and ignite a four-man Boston attack. He started to shoot it in. He hesitated. And then it was the offside. There's a big difference in the goaltending in this first period. I don't know whether it would be fair or unfair to say that if there was an equalization in the goaltending score, it could be able to one for Boston. Well, Peters, of course, uh, looking shaky on the goal by Bossy, the one that made it 2 nothing for New York. But you have to give him all the marks in the world for the stop on Billy Carroll. A play which could have given the Islanders a 3-1 lead about 30 playing seconds later. Boston comes back and makes it 2-2 on the goal by McTavish. So I guess the situation has a way of leveling off. But no question about it, the Bruins have had the better scoring opportunities. Now Trottier leading Bossy on his wrong wing. He was partially stopped by Bork. Now going after Bossy. And missing him was Dufour. Dufour has been with him all the time in this series. Put the puck away and knocked Bossy down. And the Islander fan says, where is the penalty on that? There should have been one. Down interception. It's kept in there by Middleton. Middleton passing it over. Trottier is stopped to the ice by Bork. A shot by Middleton block. And the Islanders on the left side. Janssen getting it back to Bossy, back to Janssen, there's the shot. Peters came out and he channeled that shooter very well. He looked very confident on, the, on that move. Now Bourne is chased back into the center ice area, coming down on the left side. A pass, back to Bourne! Right there, Sutter just let that backhand go and caught the short side on Pete Peters. Give Sutter a lot of credit for the speed in which he let the shot go. As soon as he had it on the stick right there, cradled it once and fired the backhand. So the Islanders regained the lead after the Bruins failed to control that bouncing puck deep in their zone. An important goal in the final moment of play in the period. Sutter in 1936 scores his seventh of the playoffs. Now the puck is back in Boston territory. And 
with less than a dozen seconds, 11 to be exact. The face-off will be down to the right of Billy Smith, and that has to annoy Jerry Cheevers. However, he understands he was a goalie, too. Well, you know what the Islanders have done in this period? They have taken advantage of their opportunities. And really, that's the only time that they have come close to scoring. They had the breakaway when Carroll didn't score. The other opportunities, they did. Uh, Pete Peters. At the other end of the ring, Billy Smith has certainly just been great against the Bruins, who have had the majority of good scoring chances. Now McTavish is going after Pearson. The Islanders are going to get it out to come with Bourne. Three seconds. He has time. Bourne is going in. He shoots big save by Peters. Peters coming up. And Bourne had enough time then to get that puck into the net. Emotions for Pete Peters, certainly. He has made a couple of big, big saves, and this was one of them. Two seconds showing on the clock when Bourne let the backhand go, and Peters makes the save. And so the score at the end of the first period, the New York Islanders three, and the Boston Bruins two. The thing is, the Bruins don't want to get away from their game plan, because whatever it was, Jerry Cheevers has had in store for the Islanders. It was working to a degree, even if not on the scoreboard, but they played very well. Their first period performance bodes well for the avid shooter and the approach they have for this game. However, they are behind 3-2, to two, and they go to the attack. It's Bourne over on the boards. The Bruins barge in there. McTavish is in there. You know, how seriously do the people of Massachusetts take the Boston Bruins? The Boston Herald headline today summed it up and tells the story. It says a man shot for criticizing the Bruins in a public place in Lynn, Massachusetts. Well, what do you mean a public place? In a bar in Lynn, Massachusetts, right after they turned off the television set when the Bruins fashioned a spectacular win. Some guy got up and he said the Bruins are no good. Bingo, he was shot. He's in the hospital. Well, now, Danny, it's your job to keep on top of all those fast-breaking news stories for us. Well, there's one thing, of course, I think that's getting sport. Not in, their prop, in its proper perspective, but it certainly indicates what a hold it has on some fans, unfortunately. Well, there is Ray Bork, who has got to play well for Boston, and he has so far. I know we have a lot of people watching out in Edmonton, Danny, friends of yours, friends of mine. I can tell you there's a sign up very high in the Nassau Coliseum that reads, Live from Edmonton on Tuesday night. <laughs> where they want their hockey team to be. It's going to be a tremendous series, regardless of the team that plays against the Edmonton Oilers. We'll talk more about the Oilers later. We'll just tell you right now, a team blessed with some great forwards, with blistering and blinding speed. They've tightened up that defense. Paul just played outstanding hockey. And the Oilers have come up with a maturation that is necessary going into a Stanley Cup final. So they'll be taking on the winner of this series. The Islanders settling it in front. And here come the Boston Bruins with Middleton on the right side. Winds up for the shot. And he rattled it off the knee. Bob Gillies, sharp angle, fake shot. And the Islanders two on one. Bossy with Gillies. Gillies coming in. Bossy shoots. Absolutely tremendous shot by Mike Bossy. His second goal of the game. Watch the angle we have it here and watch the top corner. Stick side on Pete Peters. Perfect angle right there on that camera shot. The Bruins caught with a defenseman up the ice. Ray Bork sliding. He committed himself. The only man back. And Bossy hung on to the puck as Bork goes down and then just leads into that shot in typical Mike Bossy fashion. One minute gone. Second period. It's 4-2 Boston. The Bruins are having their traffic. 13 of the playoffs unassisted at 59 seconds. A very, very big goal for the New York Islanders by Bossy, his second of the night of the Islanders, leading the Bruins 4-2. There's McTavish squaring off against the 
guy who missed the last game for the Islanders, number six, Morrow. Manny, the Bruins scored two goals in just a little over a minute of playing time. If you go back to the goal scored late in the first period by Brent Sutter in 1936, the official time of that goal was announced as 59 seconds for Mike Bossy. So there's been quite a turnaround through a couple of minutes, a minute and a half or so of playing time from a 2-2 hockey game to a 4-2 New York lead. And Bossy, great playoff performer, great performer, regardless of whether it's the playoffs or not. That's his 13th goal. Now the Islanders are up there again. They center the backhand shot. Peters coming out. Big save. Oh, Peters was big on that. Pressure here by the Islanders. Back it comes to the line of the Boston Bruins. Swinging it down on the left side to McNabb. He drops it back. Johnson takes Keith Crowder out of the play. Now McNabb is tied up on the boards. By Morrow, the puck is loose. McNabb still with it. He gives it to Bork. Bork playing it behind the net. And that is Brent Sutter ahead on the left side to Bourne. Wayne Sutter is on the other side. Excellent speed by Bourne. There he goes. Put the red in front. Brent Sutter making a move to shake off the touch. Behind the net it goes. Islanders setting it over. But a shot. Big save there by Peters. Right at the lip of the crease. Brent Sutter took a shot. Now Bourne shoots it for Billy Smith saw it, and he held on. From Long Island, New York, this is Stanley Cup 83 on CBC. But it's still early in the second period. Now it is Casper, back to Park, off his stick. Nystrom to Goring, lead pass to Trottier. And Park took it away rather coolly, swings the pass into the center ice area. Big Krusiliski, outstanding in playoffs this year. That time it was not a good play, he gave it away, and Potvin cleared it with the assistance of Nystrom. There is Melnick, good move to get away from Nystrom. The Bruins will now have to accent the offense even to a greater degree. They are behind by two goals. 16 minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the second period. The Islanders getting clear of it down the ice, driving back there is Park. Park in behind the net to Casper. He couldn't come up with it. Tonelli lost it. Now ahead to Krusiliski, the back pass to Casper. This could be offside. It is. Well, the Bruins perhaps a little flustered right now as we look at Morrow, who has steadied the New York defense, I am sure. They talked about how they missed him in the game the other night in Boston. But the goal at the end of the first period, don't forget the board chance, too, after they made it 3-2. to two. Peters made the big stop. Then the goal by Mike Bossy, less than a minute into this second period. And you wonder if the Bruins can bounce back again. They were down 2 nothing early. They came back to make it 2-2. They're down by 2 once more. The Islanders look much more impressive so far in this second period. Now Kluzak got rid of it. It is Morrow. Playing it over the other side. Johnson returned it. Lead pass. Drotzi cleared it in. Dump was bossy. Haller going to the corner. Islanders in over the line and the Bruins knock it out. And you notice much more frequently in this period that the Islanders have their defense way up near the Bruins line. There's a sharp angle shot. It went off the goalie and Kluzak bearing it into the center ice area to Peterson. Middleton chasing a pass and Janssen cleared it out back in on the offside. 4-2 for the Islanders. Tonight's Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from Long Island, New York. New York leading 4-2. Now they fight for it on the ice is married and the play is stopped. Here we have banners as we have in every other rink. You haven't got as many banners as you had in the Garden in Boston because you have the Celtics and the Bruins there. Not as many as you have in Montreal or Toronto. But you have four New York Island Patrick Division Championship banners. You have three Stanley Cup banners. And of course, as everybody knows, it follows this game of hockey and the Islanders. Won the Stanley Cup the last three years. They 
hope to make it four this year. They're fighting for a Stanley Cup berth against the Edmonton Oilers here in this series against Boston. They lead in this game four to two. They need one more win to get into the finals. That shot went over the glass. We mentioned the word frustration on the part of the Bruins. Brad Park in his 15th NHL season, he has never won a Stanley Cup. And he must be wondering now. A lot of great hockey players never uh, got out of stand. How about Bill Gatsby? He was in the league for about 20 years, wasn't he? Number 66 when Detroit won the first two in the finals. The series you referred to the night, everybody said, ah, now Gatsby will get his Stanley Cup. Still was denied. And Bill was one of the great ones, no question about it. Ford knocked his man down. Ford Rager put back in. Scores! And we've got a fight in front of the New York net. Hillier of the Bruins. And I believe it's Thomas Johnson who he's involved with. But in any event, the Bruins have scored. Now here again, Jerry Cheevers had four defensemen on the ice with Hillier and Bork playing on the wings. Melnick and Park on the fence. And it paid off as Raymond Bork, I think, put the buck in the net. They still haven't changed the scoreboard. There's some confusion here with the fight having taken place. But watch Bork fight off Big Gord Lane. And that's not easy. Keeps his balance. And scores on the backhand. It hits Smith on the leg as he falls and bounced in behind the Islanders goaltender. But just a sensational individual play by Ray Bork. First showing strength and great balance on the play. And Bork scores his eighth of the playoffs. And we have a one-goal hockey game on a one-man effort by Ray Bork. An unassisted goal at 5-0-1. Johnson and Hillier draw minor penalties for that little altercation after the goal was scored. The Boston Bruins exemplify to the nth degree resiliency and determination. They get behind, they keep coming back. There's an example. Bork, right out in front, backhand shot as Dick indicated. An outstanding individual effort. So it's 4-3 now with the Islanders leading the Bruins. 14.52, the time remaining in the second period. Bourne, perhaps the fastest skater in this series, doesn't get very far in that effort. Kluzak playing it to O'Connell. O'Connell leading a three-man attack. Coming down to the line, takes the shot right in there. Alertly, Smith covers. Clears it to the wing. So we have the teams playing five aside. Now coming in, Ford, and it's McNabb shooting it down the ice. This will be icing in all probability against the Bruins. Ray Bork has a goal and two assists. He has figured in all three Boston goals. Mike O'Connell, as we watch him, getting a lot of work, especially with Mike Milbury on the injured list in the Bruins scheme of things. Well, there's a Raymond Bork fan here at the Nassau Coliseum. It's not totally an Islanders crowd. Although she and her friends are vastly outnumbered. Well, Danny, a different situation here now. Suddenly the crowd, a bit quieter. Well, you would think that the reaction of the fans and the way the Islanders were going when they made it 4-2, they were going to walk away with it, but the Bruins had other ideas now. Right here, but they score! It tops the eight, making the play, and in it went. Frank Bozzi has a hat trick. Just five minutes past in the second period, and they're throwing hats on the ice. That one comes right off the faceoff. They let Bossy get loose at the crease right there. He battles a bottle, and Peters can't get over in time. Boy, isn't this a familiar sight in the Islanders' winning years? Trotchy, Bossy in the net, and they're picking up the hats now. The linesmen are. Some sombreros have been thrown. An Uncle Sam top hat has been thrown. There you see an example of how they have saluted Mike Bossy for a playoff hat trick, his second of the series. He had three goals in the game here, game four. 
Patsy did a lot of work on that uh, movie, Dick. Danny, the strength of Brian Pratchett, I remember doing an interview with Don Cherry several years ago when Grapes was still coaching Boston, and we had him talk about various personalities around the NHL players, and we said, what do you think of when you think of Brian Pratchett? And he said, strength. Well, you saw it right there. He just held on to the puck, made the play while being checked, Bossy did a good job as well, but now we'll take a look at Trache here. He's being watched. He's being bothered. Klozak much bigger, but Trache gets away from him, and Bossy puts the puck in the net. 5-3, and Danny, a big one coming right on the heels of Ray Bork's brilliant goal to move the Bruins to within one. 14 minutes and 9 seconds, the time remaining in the second period. There were those... Most of the knowledgeable about this game of hockey thought this would be a low-scoring game. But it's 5-3, and we're just in the second period. But then again, we don't have many low-scoring games these years. Certainly not this year. Pearson takes a shot, and he blasted one over the top of the net. There's Bossy struggling against Bork. Bork gives it to O'Connell ahead to Middleton at the line. Here's Bossy again getting in front, and it's knocked away by Middleton. Coming up to join Middleton in over the line is Peterson. It goes to Peterson off his skate. And Trottier very coolly takes over for the Islanders. Trottier digging with determination up on that right side. Now he goes to the other side of the rink and to the Islanders' bench. Tonelli is on with Gorin. They're still playing five aside, but that went one way. He was taken care of by Lane, and the puck went the other way. Hunt shooting it back in there, and it went off at Nab wide. Pressure now by the Boston Bruins, but the Islanders are going to get it up. Tonelli coming in. A hustling player. Good body check by Park. Number 22. Belgian number 27, Tonelli. Tonelli jostling into the boards with Kluzak. McNabb tipped it over to the far side. The penalized players are back on. Here's McTavish around the net. McTavish puts on the brakes, getting set for a pass. And the pass hit Morrow. McTavish into the corner as goes to Crowder to McNabb. He couldn't control it. Back in behind the net. Keith Crowder going after it, but Nostrum failed to clear it out. Here's McNabb. The Bruins are going in, and there's a penalty for interference. Boston draws the penalty. This is Hockey Night in Canada from the Nassau Coliseum. Shared by several players, all the way from Rock and Richard to Wayne Gretzky. They've lost track of what's happening out there, but they're all the goals they've scored. But Bossy has his third hat trick of this 1983 playoff year. And the Islanders leading by two. They go on the power play. Hot Van is forced back. 5 3 for New York in the second period. 11.55 remaining. Hot Van sweeps it in there. Bork gets it to the line. Not out. Now back at the line, Janssen over to Potvin, shooting it in, they try to get it in front, Bourne shot it in front, and was picked up by Park, shot down the ice, and let's see, we're going to have a couple of penalties here, that is Brent Sutter and Bourne. Sutter and Bourne in front of the net started to jab each other with sticks. Bourne jabs and what you call stick swinging, and they are both going to the penalty box. With the score, the Islanders 5 and the Bruins 3. This is Stanley Cup 83. On that last exchange, and he's in the penalty box. So in the Crowder penalty, which is the all-important penalty from the point of view of the manpower alignment on the ice, a minute and 23 seconds left. So the Islanders, on the power play, they lead 5-3. It's shot in by Keller. In along the boards, Janssen trying to catch up with it. And O'Connell cleared at the center. Now Trottier is coming in with Keller. He tried to lead his man, but Keller was going the other way. Trottier, big factor tonight. He was in there bumping, took that pocket back to the line. Finally, Deonson over the other side. Rossi, it goes to Puff, and a shot! And a big save there by Bourne. That was a tough shot. It was low, but it put off the ice. Now that's Johnson, number three, 
Where will he pass it? He goes over to Barfan, back it goes to Bossy. Bossy passes it back, and it's deflected out over the line by O'Connell. 30 seconds left in the penalty. The Islanders are back in, right in front of Cubs. Peters knocked it away from Trottier, who was being set up by Bossy. Peterson takes a shot. And it was Captain Cockfan who was the goalie on that, and the Islanders coming back rather quickly. Into the corner is Keller. In front of the net is Trottier. Now Bossy goes in front and behind the net. They move around. Trottier. Penalty has expired. They try to center it in front. It's caught up in somebody's paraphernalia. Is it loose again? Yes, it is. Now the Islanders center it. It comes to the side, right in front. Bossy trying to get it, trying to get another trick. They score! Mike Bossy, four goals and counting. Here tonight before a deliriously happy crowd at the Nassau Coliseum. This one isn't really what you could call artistic. They just battle and fight and scrape and scratch and Park is down and Peters is down and Bossy is where he so often is at the right place at the right time. Oh, what can you say about him, Danny? He's got that tremendous shot, but he also has that marvelous knack of being where the puck is. And Mike Bossy smiles, and well, he should. Four goals tonight, 15 on the playoffs. It's 6-3 New York. A fellow who knew something about scoring in the National Hockey League while Balsey was still a junior predicted that Balsey would be an outstanding scorer in the National Hockey League. The fellow making that prediction, Rocket Richard, and the Rocket, if he is watching tonight, must have a smile across his face because this guy is one of the most prolific and deadly men around a net that you will find in this era of hockey or any era. There the Bruins missed a great scoring opportunity. That was Gillis who was set up and he deflected it wide. Six to three. The Islanders leading the Bruins. Puck slashes it in there. Now on the board. Middleton working. Trying to center it against Goring. Puck is on the board. Dostrom is bumped off the puck. Now Peterson shoots it in there and it went wide off Middleton's stick. Pressure by the Bruins, and they force the Islanders to shoot it down the ice, and an icing infraction of Buster Cog against New York. Well, the first breather we've had for a while as we look at the hero of the evening so far, Mike Bossy, with four goals. He scored them every which way in the empty nets with big shots from the right wing. And the fourth one came right here in front of the net, jabbing home the puck after the big scramble with Peters down on the play. So a three-goal lead for the Bruins, and that freeze frame tells it all. Mike with his fourth goal of the night now joins Wayne Gretzky and Mark Messier, who have come up with four goal games in the playoffs this year for Edmonton. The Islanders win this one. We'll have a matchup between Bossy and Gretzky and many other great scoring stars. Dufour has been involved with some fans here. He wrapped a stick in one of them. Flash. Now that is Bohr leading it to Sutter. Back to Dwayne Sutter from Brent. Into the corner, the most pugilistic individual on the Islands team, according to the boss team, has been number 12, Dwayne Sutter. Now the Bruins coming back. There's Brent Sutter with his brother Dwayne. In over the line, giving it to Dwayne. Going in for the shot, and he hit the side of the net. But there are Sutters wherever you go. Great hockey players, too. And I understand that there are a couple of juniors with left grids on their own staff. Well, they've been drafted. Now, here's Brent Sutter. In over the line, clearing it in, coming from the other side. Brad Gillies, Wayne Sutter, bumped Crowder. They've already had a fisting sector in this series. Number 12, Wayne Sutter, and 32, Bruce Crowder. Dufour, going to the line. Well, Dufour was a great hero in covering Bossy in Boston on Thursday night. But this is Bossy's night tonight. 
There's Mary laying it on the boards. Keith Crowder. Haas on the left side. Racing after it. McTavish to McNabb. McNabb jammed under the play by Janssen. Ahead to Nystrom. Back for Nystrom. Broken up by the Bruins. And the clock indicating 7 minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the second period. Here are the Bruins. Trusat takes a shot. They run it off the knee and off the boards. Grabbed by Smith. Hockey Night in Canada will continue in just a moment. The Rocket leads with 82. It's amazing how long that record is still at 82. 23. Shooting in off the board for Bourne. An almost impossible angle. Morrow, a shot of deflection by Trotsky. Trotsky in the fire! Almost had the feeling for a moment that Trotsky was looking for Mike to give him the puck to make a number five. The net was wide open. You know, people talked about Trache and Bossy after the first two games, saying they had to start scoring. They had to come alive with it. There you go. Mike Bossy hopped out of the way that time. And so now they have just erupted again in this game. Of course, Bossy is getting the major headline tonight, Dick, as well he should. But Trotsky is playing an outstanding game, particularly here in the second period. Danny, one thing follows the other. When Trotsky is making things happen, Bossy's there to cash in. And that time, it was Brian Trotsky at the 13-14 mark, his seventh goal of the playoffs. 13-14, Trotsky assisted by Moore and Moore. And it is 7-3. Now the Bruins on center. Bork coming up. Along the boards and stopped there by Melanie. This pass goes into the corner. They fight for it. Bork going in there again and that brings about a face off and it'll take place to the right of Smith. Ray Merrick hasn't played all that much in the playoffs. But he's getting some action here tonight and probably will. Al Arbor is going to, I'm sure, use all of his troops through to the end of this one with the 7-3 lead. Still 6.15 to go in the second period. The situation that looked so promising for the Bruins at the end of the first period when it was 3-2 has become almost calamitous now with the Islanders leading the 7-3. So Mike Bossy getting three goals in one period. So they'll do this face-off again. Six minutes and 14 seconds, the time left in the second period. The Bruins get it back to the line. It goes down the ice. Melnick clearing it to the other side. Here is Barr, number 17. This is his first turn. He came out about a minute ago. He's still out there. He took a shot away wide. Nystrom shoveling it to Janssen. They head by the puck tomorrow. Four Islanders to the attack. On the left side, Trottier knifed it into the corner. Trottier on with Merrick and Nystrom. Now a change has been made. Boston clearing it in. Gillies has come off the bench, replacing Trottier. Islanders 7, the Bruins 3. At the line, Nystrom. Nystrom getting set, clearing it into Merrick. There's a shot. It's loose in the crease. And Peters covers that. Live from the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island, the Stanley Cup playoffs. Well, we have again some work being done on the ice by linesman Wayne Bonney before they get set for this face-off in the Boston zone. The Islanders lose that draw, but they haven't lost very much in this second period. They certainly have put the Bruins right on the lip of the brink of elimination with this big lead. But a lot of time left, but the way this Islanders team plays with a big lead here at the Coliseum, 
There are Wolves in front. They jam away on it. And it's cleared to the line. Shot back in by Morrow. So the Islanders subscribing now for the best defense of strong offense. Danny, what have we seen in this period? And you remarked as the period began after the bossy goal at 59 seconds that the Islanders are playing so much better. What we're seeing here now is the kind of hockey we've become accustomed to seeing the Islanders play when they have been in control. They, they start to take over. That goal by Brent Sutter in the end of the first period was a very, very big play. And in this period, they pretty well just haven't given the Bruins the puck. They just haven't allowed the Bruins to control the play the way Boston did for a large degree through the first 20 minutes. And that's the kind of hockey the Islanders have to play. They got away from it totally in Boston the other night. Mind you, the Bruins had a lot to do with that. They played such a fine game. But coming up for the second period, you can just see that the Islanders were back in the groove, that they played that puck control game and have been totally in command. They were very, very fortunate to go into the dressing room leading after the first period. They took advantage of the break. There's a pass in front. Krusilinski. In other words, they were let off the hook in the first period. The Bruins let them off the hook. Now there's a pass over to Nystrom going in. And he was checked by Dufour. Four minutes and 20 seconds left. Here come the Bruins. There's a shot wide. Taken from outside the line. It was Dufour going after it, after he took the shot. There's going to be a high-sticking penalty. Thorn Lane, high-sticking on Dufour. This Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from Long Island, New York. Minor officials tonight are from Philadelphia. That gentleman, the penalty timekeeper in the box, that's where Gord Lane is. He's off two minutes high-sticking at 15.49. So I would think if the Bruins have any chance at all to get back into contention, they would have to score a goal here on this power play. They're coming very close to the end of the second period. There is a four-goal differential. The Islanders leading 7-3. Bork coming down. He's had an outstanding series. Over on this side to Park going in for the shot. Big save by Smith. That was a point-blank range blistering blast by Park. And Smith just eyed Park as he was going in, stayed with it, and he kicked it out. Now Middleton's pass goes off a leg. Park swings it back into the center ice area. Good move by McNabb. McNabb over the other side. Fort clearing it in. It goes for Middleton. Will he be able to come up with it? Here's McNabb severing it in front. Pearsa is down and it is heat. They bang away with the whistle had gone. Now there's Peterson. And Carroll. I think that's Carroll. Maggie Wong with the crossbar. Peterson pushed a good part of Billy Carroll into the net, but he has to get inside the net, of course, as the puck, not a player. Pearson came up on the limp after making the defensive play, falling on the puck. It did get loose. Smith and Pearson trying to cover up on the play, and finally the Islanders did cover up on the play. And there you see the pushing and shoving and the slight hassle going on. Peterson and Carroll lane in the box with 55 seconds left. New Westminster junior player native of Brandon, Manitoba, coming here from Washington, where they said he wasn't wanted. Joined the Islanders in time to win their... He went them and they won the Stanley Cup for the first time in 80, and of course has been a fixture here in New York ever since. 24 is in the penalty box. The man about whom Dick was just speaking. That's Lane. 52 seconds remaining. In his penalty fork into McNabb on his front. O'Connell a weak shot. Nowhere near the net. Work winds up with a shot. Hopping on a screen shot. Billy Smith coming up with it. And again, more pushing and shoving. The Bruins, the frustration beginning to show. And now for about three whistles in a row, we've had this sort of thing taking place. Look at pen penalties caught here. Ken Morrow of the Islanders going to the box along with Keith Crowder of Boston. And Hellman calling them for high sticking very likely. Morrow doesn't know what it's like to lose. 
from the Olympics and Mike Lassen shook hands as a winner there and he's shaking hands as a winner at the end of all of his seasons of the NHL. Three straight with the He Islanders. has been fabulously fortunate since the Olympics, but then again, he has contributed to the success of this Islanders team. He has contributed immeasurably. We've mentioned so often, you see him in there, that he is not a spectacular hockey player, but he delivers with a fair degree of authority behind the line. The hot band shooting it down the ice. The acquisition of Goring in that year, three years ago, drew most of the attention, but a lot of people here in New York say almost as important was the acquisition of Moro, who played very steadily right from the start. I don't know if they could have won the Stanley Cup without the contributions of Goring and Moro. Now the Bruins keeping it in there. Peterson is trying to get it loose. He's jammed into the boards by going in center to middle. And he scores! Middleton, well, they got the goal that I felt they had to get. And it is now 7-4. Rick Middleton's 11th playoff goal coming at with 2.21 left here in the second period. A power play goal for Boston. Barry Peterson from the corner. Out battles Butch Goring, kicks it loose. Good play by Peterson, using the skates along the boards. And Middleton just drilled it home on the short side. He stuffed it. Smith didn't have a chance to get over and cover up on the play. 7-4 the score. Strange kind of a score when you consider these teams were 1-2 in goals against in the NHL this past regular season. The Islanders winning the Jennings Trophy by a margin of two over the Bruins. by number 16, Rick Middleton. Dunn graduate, turning in an outstanding performance and a losing cause to date for the Bruins. I have reference to number seven, Ford, but he has been outstanding. The play is called back. You notice there that there was a stick above the shoulder making contact. He's an exciting hockey player, Raymond Ford. So is Mike Bossy, who has four goals on the night if you have just joined us. Only three players in NHL history had scored five goals in a single playoff game. Rocket Richard, Daryl Sittler, and Rich Leach. Well, Bossy scoring his fourth goal just past the halfway mark in the second period at 10.03. Still has 21 minutes and 47 seconds ahead to get number five. But there was an oddity about the Rockets' five goals. What would it have been? The only five. Do you ever miss out on anything oh, else? Lots of times. No, You're very, very sharp. And did they give him all three stars that I night? think so. Elmer Ferguson did. Yes. Gave him all three stars. Now here's Casper coming in. Ushaliski taken out of the play. The Islanders clearing it up on the boards. Gillies can't knock it out against Bruce Crowder. The play is stopped. Somebody in there with Casper. Sticks going up, but nothing of a serious nature develops. And the other player was Brent Sutter. They're very aggressive. Good hockey players, very aggressive. Well, you just hope that this sort of pushing and shoving isn't going to continue on. These teams have given us some excellent hockey, some very competitive hockey. Look at the Islanders. You talk about goal scoring. The Oilers, of course, in a class by themselves in the playoffs. But the Islanders have scored now in almost eight periods on home ice in this series. 22 goals on a pretty good defensive hockey team. A minute and 18 seconds left in this period. And Al Arbor decides to walk the rest of the minute and 18 seconds. You saw him take off from behind the bench. I wonder how many miles he puts on in the run of a game, in the run of a year, the run of a career. There he is. <laughs> Keep going, Al. We're going to clock you. Now the puck is out over the line. It's cleared into Boston territory. Peters left it there for O'Connell. Here's Bossy looking for it. In behind the net is Keller. Keller twisting and turning. Bossy getting in front. It's to the side of the net. And the final's going to get a holding penalty, I believe. Coming up in our second intermission in just a few moments' time, Brian McFarland's going to be conducting a bit of a playoff panel with 
John Davidson, the goaltender of the New York Rangers, and Mike Bilbury, the injured defenseman of the Boston Bruins. And we'll take a look at Larry Robinson's Conn Smythe Trophy winning year of 1978. O'Connell for holding. Now watch, here they come into the picture right here as he tackles Mike Bossy. Jerry T. really wishing there had been a few more downfield tackles on Mike Bossy so far in the hockey game. So O'Connell's in the box. Penalty called at 1904. The Islanders leading the Bruins 7 to 4. We are 56 seconds away from the end of the second period. Keller, Bossy, Trotsier, Janssen, and Potvan. Back to Potvan. Swinging it into Bossy to Potvan over on this side. Janssen playing into the corner along the boards. Bruins trying to get possession. They do, and they shoot it down the ice. Number 25 got it cleared down the ice. One of the big surprises for the Boston team has to be the two-way play of number 25 this year, Kruschelniski. Here's Potvan. Good, solid body belt. By Park, he flattened Potvan. We don't see many of these body checks the way hockey is played these days. Here's Bossy swinging it off the boards back to Potvan. The shot. Bossy, who else was in there looking for the rebound? Bossy was right there. He has great instincts, great anticipation. That means so much to a, a goal scorer. And it's one of the reasons why Mike Bossy has hit the 60 goal mark so often in his NHL career. All right, now watch this. This is Potvat, who's a pretty good hip check man himself, but Brad Park has thrown more than a few of those in his 15 years in the NHL, and Park nailed Potvat perfectly on the play. 17 seconds left in the period, a minute and 21 seconds remaining in the penalty. Go O'Connell. Now it is Janssen swinging to the center off the boards to Bossy. Flipping it into the corner to Trotsier. Krushelniski along the boards. And it's cleared down the ice by Kluzak. And this is the end of the period. Standing ovation for the Islanders. This capacity crowd feeling that the jig is up. That the Islanders are going to win this one. They lead by three goals. And they sense another Stanley Cup final series. But there's another period to go. Okay, Dick. The Islanders have shot the Bruins 13 to 6. All right, Danny, here we are, third period. And Bossy may have a chance to get the fifth goal very quickly because the Islanders are on the power play. 56 seconds remaining. It's right in front. And Keller missed that Bossy pass. Now Potvin. Islanders keeping it in. Trottier chasing it to the far side by Kapirsov. Into the corner, Keller. Around the net is Bossy. Right in front. And it went between the skates of Trottier. Bork feeding it ahead to the line. And Krusilniski cleared it down the ice. Now there are 22 seconds left in the penalty. The score is 7-4 for the Islanders over the Bruins. And we're into the third period. Now Trottier. Bossy is in front. They try to get it out in front. It comes to the side of the net. Bossy has it in behind the net. It goes to Trottier. Trottier has Gillies right in front. But they're definitely trying to set up Bossy. Now Bossy has it. It's at the side of the net. The quarters are very close. And a penalty coming up against Gillies. Bossy took the shot. But the penalty was about to be assessed. Gillies drawing a penalty from Long Island, New York. This is Stanley Cup 83 on CBC. He's shown with the 54 Detroit Red Wings in addition to Toronto twice and Chicago. But playing for three different teams with one Stanley Cup. So that's got to be something. There is Goring almost cashing in on a lap by the Bruins. 7 to 4, the Islanders leading in. The Bruins face a Herculean task here in the third period as they try to make up a deficit of three goals. Let them just bring them up in even terms with the proviso that the Islanders do not score. So you see how gigantic and colossal it is. But as we mentioned so often, and we did it very frequently in Boston on Thursday night, this Bruins team has been an outstanding team with 
tremendous courage and resiliency. Now in on the board, Smith is going to watch it against Krusilinski. Middleton dumped it in front and it was gobbled up by Billy Carroll. And now the ice it goes. A minute and 15 seconds, the time remaining in the Gillies penalty. The Bruins, four of them coming out rather slowly. Now Peterson over the other side and it is offside. Danny, this morning as we look at Rick Middleton, uh, we were talking, I was chatting with some of the Bruins brass. There's a story making the rounds about a possible trade between Montreal and Chicago. And two of the individuals that could be involved in the trade, according to the rumors, are coaches, Orville Tessier and Bob Barry. We were chatting about this, and Jerry Cheevers was there. And Tom Johnson, the assistant general manager, says to me as he winks, he says, what do you think we could get for our coach? Before I could come up with a one-liner, Cheevers says, Toe Blake is retired. Turned and left the room. <laughs> we had no comeback on that one. Touche, touche. Well, the Bruins accomplished what they wanted to do to one degree on Thursday night. They won at home. Your father used to have a theory, make sure you win the last game you play at home. However, I'm sure the Bruins are not satisfied with just staving off elimination on Thursday and making a six-game necessary here. They want to win this game. And toward that end, Clark clears it up on the... Right wing, Keith Crowder is stopped by Goring. And the tenacity of the four checking by the Islanders will increase as the game progresses. They will put less accent on the offense and realize they have that three goal lead. And if they hold that lead or any part of it, they'll go into the Stanley Cup Finals. Now cruising in there is Park. Park making the moves, trying to get through there. And finally, he was stopped by Lane. Here are the Bruins. The penalty has expired to Gillies. And the Islanders are back with a full complement. And they clear it down the ice, and New York is going to be called for icing. Tonight's Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from Long Island, New York. The frame of mind drastically different between the two. Now Peterson is going to come back and face off against Trottier. Hillier is on the right point, Tuzak on the other. And the Islanders with Merrick trailing his nice from over the line. Merrick trying to get through there. Peters dropped it in behind. Luzak headmans it to Middleton. And the defense of the Islanders, you saw there caught then. He was right up almost to the Boston Blue Line, and so was Johnson, who is now going back to get the puck, and he clears it out over the line. 15 minutes and 55 seconds, the time remaining in the third period. 7-4 to four for the Islanders. Now it's up on the right wing, Peterson. Over for Middleton. Bork is going in there, trying to get a pass. He goes in to get possession himself, and Trotsky cleared it to the other side to Gillies. In behind the net, Johnson, and that man Bossy is out there again, and he just delicately rolled it out over the line. Harbour now completes the changes that he was in the process of making. Hawkman spearheading an attack, two on one, with Tonelli. Hawkman shoots, and Peters stood there, and Hawkman more or less shot a right at him. Peters held his ground. Bruins guilty in a bit of a bad line change that time, and it gave Hawkman some skating room. Here we look at it again, Denny Hawkman straight up the center ice alley. And lets the shot go, but as Danny mentioned, Peters just standing right there playing the angle well. Folks out in Saskatoon will be interested in a meeting that will be held here in New York. Wednesday, May 18th, 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. According to an official release uh, from the National Hockey League's office, the purpose of the meeting to consider the sale of the St. Louis Blues to policy of holding is limited and the transfer of that franchise to Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. So they have scheduled a governor's meeting on the 18th. Are you wagering that the team is going to Saskatoon? Bill Hunter is involved. I'm not wagering anything. He is a remarkable person. Now it is Park. Offended penalty coming up. The 
Islanders are running into the penalties. This time it's bearing. But on the other one in this period, the Bruins could not come up and take advantage of it. But right now, they'll have another opportunity. This is Hockey Night in Canada from the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island. And they have McNabb on. O'Connell coming up as McNabb trying to pick up the pass. It rolls in there, and the Islanders clear it to the boards. Gorin can't get it out. A splendid move by Bork. Here's Bork taking the look. Where is it going to go? We'll go pretty soon. He was knocked down. Into the corner it goes. Keith Crowder to McTavish to McNabb. Look at the end front. Upended in front of the net was Crowder after he got that wide shot away. And the Islanders shoot it down the ice. There's a great deal of determination evidence in the play of the Islanders now, Dick. Now it's been that way, Danny, since the start of the second period when they took over the hockey game. Now Peterson drifts it in there. Middleton and Bork going in. And this time... A fellow who loves to skate, he does it beautifully, born, he rips a shot. He was wide with it. Crucial this game. Back into O'Connell, O'Connell takes a look, takes a pass. Leading slowly, a five-man attack. And in the penalty, 45 minutes remaining. Now Peterson knocked down a clearing board pass. O'Connell shoots it. Kicked out nimbly by Billy Smith. Bork gives it to Peterson. He was blocked by Pockman to Middleton. Back to Peterson. In for Middleton behind the net. Middleton tipped it in front. Down and all fours is Smith. Now, Billy Smith and the Islanders are on the verge of winning their 15th straight playoff series. That's a record. They have not been beaten since the Stanley Cup semifinals of 1979. And John Davidson, Brian's guest in the second intermission with the New York Rangers, had a very large role in that upset as the Rangers beat the Islanders. Merrick in the box. He has 25 seconds to serve. Now they finally get them set to drop the puck. Hot bad. Racing there to keep it in as Park, he does. But he is intercepted. The Islanders at center. They are stopped by Crucial Miski. Here's Hot Bad coming back. The shot goes off a leg. Hot Bad right inside. And an outstanding save by Peters. Very alert work by the captain of the Islanders, number five, Hot Bad. Now the Islanders again. Nimble work by Park. Mark clearing into center. Ruzelneski. And to Peterson, the penalty has expired. There's a shot whipped in with some velocity by Bork, but he was away wide. Coming in is Mary. Mary trying to cut in from the pass. And Middleton clearing it out to Park at center. Here is Dufour. Dufour lobbed an easy shot. Ward Lane takes his time. Shooting it into the center ice area. Tonelli over to Nystrom. Nystrom coming in, but they score! Wayne Mary came out of the penalty box to join in on the attack of the Islanders as they move the puck. Tonelli and Ford doing the work. Look at Park taking on Tonelli, so he is down and out of the play. And Peters is down and out as he tried to come out and make the poke check move on Bob Nystrom at the right side. And Nystrom won the battle, put the puck across the crease. And nothing but an empty net for Wayne Merrick of the Islanders as he scores his first playoff goal. It's 8-4 New York. The assist to number 23, Bob Nystrom. Number 27, John Tanelli. Time of the goal, 7-41. First of the playoffs from Nystrom and Tonelli at 7.41. 7.41, the time of the goal. Merrick from Nystrom and Tonelli. Right in front to Tonelli, a backhand shot. He got something on that shot and he was wide. The Islanders have an insatiable appetite right now for goals. They have the Bruins by four, but they want more. 
with the score, the Islanders 8 and the Bruins 4. This is Stanley Cup 83. Well, they have been serenading here at the Nassau Coliseum to the tune of Goodnight Ladies. They're singing Goodbye Boston. Now Pearson has shot right on. The Islanders 8, the Bruins 4. Hawk fans shooting it in. Gillies. Couldn't get it from McTavish. McTavish is stopped at the line by Grant Sutter. Ripped the shot off the leg. Sutter clearing it in for Big Gillies. And the other Sutter, Dwayne, goes in there to help out. And they get a whistle. Dick, I know you're going to some bank with Southwest. And there's one I'm going to attend. And I'd like to mention. You remember Fred Scambani, what a great sportscaster he was. And how gallantly he fought cancer. Well, they're going to have, here we're going to see that action here. The Fred Scambani Golf Tournament and Sports Dinner in Thunder Bay on June the 16th. And that is for that great cause. We remind the people of Thunder Bay, June 16th. Now here's Crowder going in. Got the shot. To the side of the net. O'Connell winds up. Let's see if McNabb can pick it up on the other side against Pearson. McNabb does. He's still struggling to get complete possession. Hot back. Into the center ice. Clearing it in there. Or falling, and that's an icing infraction against the Islanders. Well, Wayne, if you're watching out in Edmonton, you're really popular here at the Nassau Coliseum. The chant that's now gone up, hard to keep track of the ball, is we want Gretzky. Well, it looks like they are going to get Gretzky and the rest of the marvelous scoring machine from Edmonton. And Danny, I think as you look ahead to a, an Islanders Edmonton final series, I just can't think of a better matchup for uh, the National Hockey League. They are right now through the playoffs. They have been the two best teams in hockey. So they are going to be meeting at the summit, the defending champions against the new kid on the block. What a tremendous confrontation it will be. They have just flashed the Stanley Cup up on the electronic board here. A little premature. That's what drew that particular cheer. Now, when you look at that Edmonton record, 11 victories and one defeat, just one defeat in the playoffs. Al Arbor, usually laconic, was rather expansive. He put together a couple of sentences talking about Edmonton. He said, <laughs> I haven't seen them, but what I hear, there's some hockey team. But, of course, he wasn't worried about Edmonton right then. He was worried about the Boston Bruins. But it would appear that that word, worry, is about to be obliterated from his mind. Penalty coming up to crucial this game. Yeah, Brian Trache gets about an 8-8 on that one. Crucial this to the penalty box. Hockey Night in Canada will continue in just a moment. And now the Islanders looking for more gold. Pearson giving it to Ford. Hot man is on this side and he takes the pass. Hot man getting it in front of Pearson. Shot. They jam away at it on the short side. And the Bruins clear it down the ice with a minute and 40 seconds remaining in the final game. And conceivably in this series, nine minutes and 15 seconds remaining. The Islanders. Leading by four, Sutter going in there, Brent Sutter. Hawk is loose. Goes to Dwayne Sutter, back to the point. Hot Van a shot. Here's Pearson from the line over to Hot Van. He has that bullet shot, but this time he gives it to Pearson. Over the other side to board. Hot Van has it. And it goes to the corner to four. The angle almost impossible. And then Brent Sutter back to Ford. Now let's see what Ford is going to do with it. Will he get it back to the point? He's headed the right oh! the spot. And that time, Dwayne Sutter just failed to get a stick on it and deflect it into the open side of the net. There are 44 seconds left in the penalty to Crucial Niski and the Islanders coming back. A long pass on the right side. This must be icing. And it is icing against New York. 
minute 17 left here in the third period. Jerry Cheevers and the Bruins trailing by four as he checks the scoreboard clock. As far as the individual scoring leaders are concerned, it looks familiar. Wayne Gretzky on top. Rick Middleton tonight with two goals to add to his total. Barry Peterson with an assist. They both had 31 points starting play this evening. So the Islanders now sending out the indefatigable number 91, particularly in the playoffs. He never stops going all the time. That is Goring. And Trotsier, number 19. He's had his best game, I think, in this series tonight. And need I tell you, the guy over on right wing, he wears number 22. He has four goals here tonight. There's Trotsier trying to pick it up. Haller is behind the net. Bossy going in. It's left there for Bossy. It's behind the net to Trotsier to Keller. To the other side. A dozen seconds left in the penalty of the broom. Shoot it down the ice. Striding back there in a very nonchalant manner is Potman to the other side. And the Islanders can afford the luxury of approaching it with calmness and confidence at this stage in the hockey game and in the series. Eight to four for the Islanders over the Bruins. The play is now for a face-off in Boston Territory. Live from Long Island, the Stanley Cup playoffs. Well, Al Arbor and the Islanders, seven minutes and 27 seconds of playing time away from advancing to the Stanley Cup final. Now at the line, Wall clearing it in. Nelly trying to set up Nystrom. Working diligently. Canelli, a shot there by Merrick. He was set up by Canelli. Canelli behind the net, trying to work it in front against Park. Now goes Peters. Puck is loose, and the Islanders are all over the Bruins. McNabb finally comes up with it, and McNabb sets up Pete Crowder coming down along with McTavish, and McNabb in on the line. Back to the line, Kuzak lays it in there. Pete Crowder to McNabb. He dumped it in front, and the Islanders start away led by Nystra. But to get more skating room, he went back in there and gave it to Tonelli over to Merrick. Merrick into the corner, bumping in there solidly against Hilliard. Six minutes and 25 seconds of time remaining in the third period. The Islanders breaking it up at the line. It's Wayne Sutter to Tonelli. Tonelli, the big guy, on the backhand, decides to pass it instead of shooting it. There's Tonelli jammed into the board by Kuzaliski. Dwayne Sutter, out to his brother Prince, to Dwayne again on the board, he lost it, and goes back to the other side, and crucial this game. In the games between the Islanders and the Bruins here at Coliseum, they have not been classic, have not been spy pickers, now here's Sutter getting in front of his puck, Gilling came off the bench and almost got a goal. Yonsa playing it back in there. The Bruins out on the right side. Bruce Crowder couldn't get anywhere. And Potman sends it back into Boston territory over the glass. And the score is here, Dick, at the 7 3, 8 3. And at this stage in this third game of the series here in New York between the Bruins. And the Islanders is 8-4. So that's not the type of electrifying playoff hockey you want to see, but victory is sweet. The home fans love it. They've seen a lot of goals by their favorite team. Mark Gillies mentioned after the game the other night in Boston that he said we might have been guilty of perhaps looking ahead to the finals a little too quickly. They got their comeuppance and it might have been a good thing. They practiced in secret yesterday at a rink uh, somewhere in suburban Long Island. First time they've done that perhaps ever. No media, no hangers on. So we're down to 5.13. That is the time remaining in this period. There's a shot right off for Bossy. He could have easily scored a good goal there because Peters actually had to make a very quick and smart move. He was free. Here's Bossy trying to get it in front. Bossy rolls it in front. The Islanders with Hoffman taking over. 
He in turn lost it for a fraction of a second regained by Bossy a pass to Trottier. And we're down to a time less than five minutes. The producer of tonight's show, Doug Beeport, director Ronnie Harrison. And thanks for their cooperation and proficiency as usual. Now, Nystrom, back to Morrill on the left side. Lane, ahead to Merrick. Merrick trying to make a move, center to the inside. And it went off Peter. Here come the Brooms. They're behind 8-4, to four, and the end of the hockey season is just about four minutes of playing time away for the Boston team. But what a magnificent year they've had. Here's Tonelli going in. Casper took him out of the play. It looks like Tonelli would get right in there. Bork coming to the line. Captain in on the left side to McNabb. He shot the shot. The rebound to Park. There's the shot. And Smith holds on. This Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island. Thought to the left of Smith. There's Keith Crowder. Got it to McNabb. But Tabbage on the corner. Couldn't get a pass in front. Poking away at it is Keith Crowder and a couple of players. Three. Two Islanders and one Brewer went to the ice. Many Pot fans said prior to this game, as far as I'm concerned, it's now a one-game series. Looking ahead, I guess, to a game seven, and not being too confident, meaning they had to win game six. So the Islanders did what they had to do. Now it is Keith Crowder spun around by Pot Fan. And down the ice. Will it have that momentum to go over the line for icing? It did not. The official was there to blow it, but it stopped short of the line by a couple of feet. Now, Puck in front. There's a shot! An outstanding save by Peters on Dwayne Sutter. Gilly's backhand shot! And the Islanders, knowing that they have this series wrapped up, are not letting up, and that's the mark of a true champion who is going out to win a title. He never lets up. Well, that was the surprising thing about their play in Boston Thursday night. In the past couple of years, an Islander team in that position, going into the other team's rink, needing the win to move into the finals, for example, would come out, and they usually won it. Good, solid hockey, but they didn't have it the other night. They had been inconsistent. We heard Butch Boring tell Brian in the first intermission they had what they felt was a mediocre regular season. They finished tied with Minnesota sixth overall. This is the most impressive they have been, Danny, as far as those of us who've covered them uh, as whenever we have covered them. This is the most impressive game we've seen the Islanders play. And I would think that the Bruins would look back to that first period when they could have fared much better. But that is irrevocable. They can't recall that. They have to face the stark reality of what the situation is at the present time. And based on an outstanding second period, particularly by the Islanders, with two minutes and 30 seconds remaining, the Islanders have a four goal budge. And it's academic to play out the bat the rest of the time in this series. But the pride of the pro is always there. And he's going to give it everything. It may sound corny, but they do it. Perhaps they don't know how much time is left. Well, Tari was telling us that he felt that the third period in particular in the game here last Tuesday night was the best his team has played all year. I wonder how he'd rate the second period. Jerry Cheever's look tells it all back of the Boston bench. So we have Burr. He's up there now for the third time for the Bruins. It is O'Connell slapping it in to the other side. Bruins couldn't come up with it. Now they finally get it at the line. O'Connell handing it off. The lead pass. The Bruce Crowder going in on goal. Good big save. Another shot. They hit the goal post. Oh, how close can you come? Big save. There's another shot. Then on the rebound, the Bruins. Hit the goal post. So some acrobatics in tantalizing fashion and some luck. 
by Billy Smith. Denied the Bruins of their fifth goal. Anyway, talked about the, Bru the Islanders coming out in the second period and taking over, but perhaps in the overall scheme of things, we forgot at that point to mention this man. Because in the first period, while he faced only seven shots, there were seven quality shots. And especially the big ones earlier on that kept the score scoreless and then close. Here's another one right here, not quite as important in the overall scheme of things, but certainly, as you mentioned, acrobatic with the puck off the post and then being swept away. A familiar story with the Islanders, Smith holding them in. And then they take over. And the time remaining, a minute and 30 seconds, eight to four, the Islanders leading the Bruins. And there will be a vocal explosion at the end of this game. And then more noise, more cheering when they present the Prince of Wales trophy to the Islanders. They are now a minute and 12 seconds away from the realization of that. And I hear a few cowbells are getting in some practice. How bad? A minute remaining. The fans are up cheering. 53 seconds remaining. Here come the Boston Bruins led by Bork. Bork shooting it in there. Everybody up. Boston can't come up with it. Hot band clearing it. Let's listen to these people cheer. And it's sweet music to the Islanders as they rush down the ice. 28 seconds. 24, shot, picked up by Smith. Dwayne Sutter knocked it into the center ice area. 15 seconds. And the crescendo is about to come. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. same time they counted their team down to a victory. I guess the fans here at the Nassau Coliseum were sending them off with good wishes to Edmonton. The sign on the electronic board right now reads, Edmonton, here we come.